Hello everyone and welcome to this new video on processing of Earth observation data using SNAP and Excel. Yes, Excel. Many users already know how to process single scenes with SNAP and the graph processing framework, but often people struggle to create scripts for bulk processing. Writing shell scripts or Python code is quite a hurdle. I will show you how Excel can help you with bulk processing and how it simplifies the whole task. For this video, I expect that you have experience with SNAP and you already know a bit about processing EELO data with the graph processing tool. If not, I suggest reading the guide provided by the SNAP developers named Creating a GPF Graph. The link is in the description below. It's also good if you have a bit of knowledge of Excel. Yeah. Let's start right away. Uh, before we start, I want to mention that you find in the description of this video a document which explains also each step of what is shown here in the video. As a quick recap, we will have a look at the GPT command line call. Here we see a uh, common command line call as I have used it in the past. So we have the path to the GPT executable file. Next, we have the options to control the data processing, the parallelization or the control of the caching. Next, we have the operator's name or the path to the XML file. Then we have the section for the scientific parameters, which configure the operator or the graph. And next we have parameters for specifying the output format, which is the location of the target file. Last but not least, we have the input. Now let us start with the Excel file and insert the constant values of the processing. These constant values are the path to the GPT executable. So I put here GPT executable. And another one is the path to the graph XML file. So XML file and base path to the output directory. So out. And yeah, those values I have already prepared. Um, so this is the standard path on Windows where the GPT executable is. And I have uh, structured my data all in the EO data folder. And there I have a processing directory. And currently I want to process the data with the C2RCC processor for LG. So, and everything shall be placed in the out directory. Next, we want to create the list of files we want to process and put the list into the Excel sheet. To do this, we need to go to the command line. Um, we can do it by pressing the Windows key and entering CMD and press enter. And there we are. Now we need to navigate to the data directory. For me, it is here. And easier way to get there is to open the file explorer, navigate to the correct location where your data is, then entering CMD to the address bar. And now you see the command line opens at this location. To get the list of files, um, we can use the dir command. And this is like this. So the last two options 
forward slash s and slash b, they are used to control the output. B means um, the output shall be printed without metadata, without header and footer information. And slash s means that um, the subdirectories shall be visited too. This pattern here is used to search for the files. The question mark um, is a placeholder for none or single character, and the asterisk is a placeholder for no or multiple characters. So the first one replaces A or B, so, and the asterisk replaces everything after the full resolution. And so I should get a list with all of my files. And yes, here we are. A clean list of all files. And I can simply copy those and, and place them here into the Excel sheet. So I leave some space and paste them here. And I say it's my source file. Before we deal with the other parameters of our processing, let's have a look at the graph XML file. Um, the XML file is not that important for this tutorial. The workflow with Excel is actually independent from the scientific processing. In my graph XML file, I first use a subset operator to shrink the geographic extent. Then I do the OLG C2RCC processing. Most parameters are fixed here in the XML file, except the two parameters salinity and temperature. Those I want to provide on the command line later. Then I have some band math to create red, green, and blue bands to be able to create RGB images later on from my process data. And then I do renaming of the chlorophyll and total suspended matter bands. And I also apply the ballot expression on them so that everything not um, processed, not chlorophyll, not TSM is marked as no data. And later on, I merge my data. So the chlorophyll, TSM, red, green, and blue bands. And I'm also including the flags from the master product. And this I reproject to UTM. So I use the automatic um, mechanism here. So I don't need to know which UTM zone it is. Um, it is done automatically. Then I need to exclude um, the longitude and latitude bands, which are not necessary anymore because we have reprojected the data. Last, I do another rep uh, subset even smaller than the first one. This is necessary. Um, otherwise, we would have a tilted scene in our rectangular image area. Now we add the two parameters, salinity and temperature, to our Excel sheet. So salinity and temperature. For salinity, I select uh, a value of 0 0.1. And for temperature, at least for now, I select the value of 21 degrees Celsius. So let's the volumes. Now we want to define our output path, but we want to have a structured output. The files shall be placed into directories according to the sensing date. 
Um, to do this, we introduce two new columns, um, month and year. How do we get this information? Um, we can extract it from the source file name. How do we extract this information? We can use the Excel function init. It takes three parameters. First, the text to extract the information from. So first we provide our source file and the month information starts at character position 53 and it's two characters long. Et voila, we have the month. For the year it's a bit different but actually the same. So we start with mid. We also use this cell. Here it starts at character position 49 and it's four characters long. So, and let's fill the column. And we have the information for month and year. Now we can define the target file name target file name and we use another Excel function to define it. It's concat. It concatenates two or more text values. So the first is an sub a section of the source file name. We will use again mid to extract it from the text file. Here we start again with the cell. Then we start at position 33 and take 24 characters. And we will append it with an identifier C2RCC. I'll correct this. It is C2RCC. So this is now our generated file name. We fill the column and we have nice file names. Next, we define in a similar manner the full path. So it's output path. We define the output path by concatenating several values. So we start here with again concat, selecting the base output directory path fixing it to the cell with F4. Then next we need to have a separator for the directory and we add a slash. Next we want to have the year and select this cell. Next we need another path separator. So again slash. Now we select the month and finally we need another backslash and we use our target file name as last element and here we have it. That's our full path. We leave out the file name extension because we define the file format separately. So we have a column file format and there we say that we want to have the data in, let's say, netcdf4 cf format. 
by specifying this format on the command line for snap GPT, um, GPT will add the default extension to the file name by its own. So complete the column and we have also this. Since you have watched this far, please consider to like this video and subscribing to the channel. You also might like to visit my Twitter channel and the website. Both links are down below in the description. Instead of having constant values for each scene, we can make this dynamic. We can have a separate table in our Excel sheet where we look up values for the specific date the scene was taken. Let's take a look. In a separate sheet, I have created a new table. Uh, for each month, I have the temperature, which I have taken from the web page Seep Temperature Info, which provides average uh, weather and water temperature for mainly um, touristic locations. So for, for beaches, for lakes, for rivers, in your case, you could use some other source, which uh, might give you daily um, average values, or you could even use your own in situ data. Our month value is still a text value because we have extracted it from the source file name. We need to turn it into a number uh, to use it for the lookup function. So how do we do it? Uh, we go into the edit field and use number value around the existing function. And uh, there is one bracket missing. So now you see it's differently formatted. And so this worked and now we have numbers. Now we can this use for the lookup. We modify the temperature instead of the constant value. We use an expression. So we type V lookup. And we want to look up the month value in the table of the other sheet and we want to return the value of the second column and this should be it. Let's fill this in and here we are. Each scene has, depending on the month it was taken, a separate temperature value. Now finally we can create our command line calls. We add another column, command, and we use the concatenation function of Excel again. Um, I paste in the final command here. And let's have a closer look. Um, B1 is our GPT executable. B2 is the path to our graph XML file. In between we have a space. Next we have the salinity parameter. We take the value from B6. And next we have the temperature parameter, we take it from C6. Then we have the target file, this is G6. So it's not only the target file, it's a full path. Next, the file format. And finally, we put in our source file name. And this will give us the whole command. So, now we can copy those commands into a text file. We paste those values 
into a text file, save it under a file name with a specific extension. We can either choose BAT for batch file or we can use CMD. I choose CMD, so my file is named Garda Processing. I have it in my processing directory of Lake Garda. I save it. And now all we need to do is to double click the command file and the processing starts. So I don't wait till the end, so I fast forward now. And we have now, after the processing is finished, all of our files sorted by month. The June data is all in the June directory and July is in the July directory as it should be. At last, I want to show you the results of my processing. It's a time-lapse of Lake Garda, just a short time period, but it's also quite nice already. Now you have learned how to use Excel for data processing. You can now do the next mass production on your own and you don't need the help of a programmer anymore. You can easily generate the command line calls for each scene even using dynamic values. And if you have done it once, you have a template at hand, which you can quickly adapt to the new processing requirements. For example, the next time you want to use another tool, maybe GDAL. Also, this is quickly done. Sure, with this approach, not everything is possible, but already most of the common use cases are covered. And it's also a good entry point into learning more about um, bug processing. Another good entry point to the EO data processing with Excel is the document I provide in the description below. It describes each step in text form, so you can do it in your own pace. If you have further questions, visit the forum on EO Masters. And thanks for following the guide and I hope you enjoyed it. Tschüss!